Welcome back, everyone, to the next installment of Corpse Party Book of Shadows. We've completed Chapter 5. Well, I should say, we made it past Chapter 5. Now we're going to go ahead and complete it. You see, we missed two wrong endings. So I reloaded at this point. We just talked to the two girls, uh, Nari and Shahaya, and... Because we've beaten the chapter, two wrong endings are now available. I could not have attained them earlier. So. This is new. He's dead. You can't tell if he's dead or not. But now we have an earthquake. Something hit me hard right in the back of the head. I began descending face first toward the ground. It felt like I was falling in slow motion though. The ground just kept coming, yet for some reason I couldn't even put my hands out to break the fall. It was like I was being slowly swept toward a wall by some giant wave. My glasses fell from my face and I distinctly remember watching them roll around. That's different, all right. Mitsuki's panicked screams brought me back to reality. Suddenly, I remembered what was happening. She and I had pursued Emi Urabe from the pool back into the school building and found her quickly enough. Unfortunately, she was already dead. Her head had been smashed open on the ground like a roasted chestnut. That is disgusting. Who could have done such a thing, we thought. And like it or not, it seemed I had now learned the answer. Mitsuki was inconsolable, understandably, but after some doing, I'd finally managed to drag her away from Urabe's remains. Ugh. We'd just begun walking back toward the school entranceway when, well, when I got struck from behind and found myself careening toward the floor. I was losing focus, but could still make out the pool of blood spilling from my head, accompanied by a sound reminiscent of a leaky faucet. And unfortunately, I could also make out the vague form of a man standing over me, raising whatever he'd hit me with into the air for another strike. Oh boy, here we go. I instinctively shielded my head with my right arm and felt every nerve ending and every muscle in it twist unnaturally as the blonde object came down. <laughs> Mitsuki's tomboyish face looked uncharacteristically wrinkled and puffy, with tears streaming down both cheeks, or maybe it was just my blurry vision? Mitsuki's sobbing screams and frantic footsteps began receding into the distance. This made me feel a little better. At least she'd be safe, I thought. It took only moments for my vision to go completely dark, but then I had taken a hammer to the head. Still, considering what I'd just been through, I'd expected to be unconscious by now, but I wasn't. I could feel every part of my body clearly. I kinda wished I couldn't, considering, but I was pretty sure I could still move, at least for the moment, so I decided to do my part. With my uncrushed left arm, I reached out blindly, felt my attacker's leg as he began turning to pursue Mitsuki, and grabbed on tight. I don't think that's gonna work. This guy's a brick. <laughs> Mitsuki was important to me. Was I still alive? I couldn't even count the number of broken bones I'd suffered, and I could still feel every one of them. My head, my arms, my ribs, every part of me was throbbing with agony. No one part of my body hurt more than another. Every injury was unbearable. Oh my god. Oh my god, he's back? I've been waiting for this guy the whole game. Someone was next to me, down on one knee, head right at my ear from the sound of it. Oh, I am so happy. A young man, probably around my age, 
聞こえてるか何があった Oh, I missed you. I couldn't see a thing at this point, not even vague shapes, but the voice addressing me sounded somehow familiar. I felt this was someone I could try. Oh, man. Even without seeing his face, I could tell he was sneering when he said this. Then, in the next instant, I felt something ho hot bore into my abdomen. Since when do you carry something hot? I thought you stuck with a knife, dude. Yeah, that is true. Fukuro is going to have it particularly bad in this place. I couldn't kill a hamster, so you're the next best thing. Mitsuki, run. No kidding, man, you got two threats now. Oh, I missed you. Which way? Just straight up. <laughs> what do I do? Choice, go. Uh, alright. Just to be safe, I'm gonna go ahead and save in a second file. I wanna make sure that these wrong endings are, uh... are acquired properly. So, um... Yeah. Second floor. Ooh. Everyone has it bad, god damn. Good job, Fukura, you sure stopped him. His expression never once changed. He was like some kind of twisted, life-size doll with one face. No doubt the face he'd be wearing when he killed me. The last face I'd ever see. What could I do? What options did I have? Alright. Light the lamp. Whoa! This music. All of a sudden. With adrenaline's help, I managed to get the matchbox out of my bag. Withdraw a match and even unsuccessfully strike it a few times, all in an instant. This music's rocking. Finally, I got a flame, but it wasn't fast enough. The expressionless giant's hammer struck me full force in my right knee. Ooh. Why are we still playing this, like, rockin' inspirational music? Oh, white flash! I had nothing left to lose at this point, so I just threw the alcohol lamp haphazardly. It struck the expressionless man's raised hammer and shattered. That could be very good. A sizable amount of methanol spilled from the shards all over his face and chest, and there, thankfully, it burst right into flames. The man's entire torso was immediately engulfed. Do you think it's going to stop him, or is he just going to be chasing you on fire? The hammer fell from his hand. No kidding! I did it! Burn slowly, you bastard! <laughs> uh, 
That's what I thought. They didn't stop Kazami in the science room, so I should stop the villain. His flaming hand grabbed my wrist. I could feel my skin instantly blistering. Can we hear that hiss? And then, mere moments later, my whole uniform went off. Ooh, man, this is bad. <laughs> Bet you it does. This sucks. This sucks. My God, that's gotta hurt. Dick. What in the hell? <laughs> this is ridiculous! I wish you did that earlier. Damn! That was so extended. With this really intense, like, you might get out of this yet music. Jesus. What are you, six or seven? Six. Okay, only two more. Whoops. No. Yeah. Alright, only two more things to do. The wrong end and the extended uh, true end. If I cut, if I get to material we've already seen, then I'll skip through it. So that was something else. Which way? Second floor again. Ugh. Okay. Now. Clearly the lamp was no good. Let's try something else. <laughs> the hell was that? It was the same sort of smell one might catch while walking past a ramen stand. All right. So, 
What? Okay, so they're getting together now? Is this happening where we were standing, or were we taken somewhere? Because what the hell? Oh <laughs> yeah, what was happening to her? And this time we don't have the alcohol lamp. My mind had been in a rather hazy state, but this poor girl's terrified screams, as if someone were tearing her heart out, brought me back to reality. I realized that my hands and feet were bound to a chair, and I was facing another young girl who was similarly bound and writhing in pain. Oh boy. She was wearing a school uniform I didn't recognize, so she must have been brought here from some other junior or senior high school. So this is... Nari? Were it not for the uniform and the voice, I might have had a tough time determining gender, as her face looked neither male nor female, young or old. It was simply too burned to discern anything at all, ugh. From the top of her head down to her neck, and even halfway down her torso, she was thoroughly charred. She'd essentially been browned, and virtually all her hair was cinched off, not unlike a peeking duck hanging outside a Chinese restaurant. Her skin was thoroughly cracked, with bits of pink flesh oozing through here and there. These are particularly grisly goddamn endings. And her eyes looked blank, cloudy, and watery, like the bottom of an order of sunny-side-up eggs. Only her teeth remained relatively intact. I have no idea how much time passed after that. For a while, the only real sounds were her chair rattling as she shook and her murmurs of agony. Then, all that stopped and the girl fell silent. Considering where she'd been burned, I suspected her lungs must have given out in the end, though really it could have been any of a number of things. My mind was a blank slate. I was beginning to lose my grip on reality and may have even laughed a little. I was in... A home ec classroom, maybe? A science lab? Oh! And all around me were arms, legs, heads, and other body parts, all simmering in pots and pans. My god, this is twisted. None of it seemed real. It was like I was watching some bad horror movie on TV, except there was odor and heat, and both were really getting to me. I was getting nauseous, but not from the smell. It was instead that from the thought that this aroma of human flesh boiling and frying was making me hungry. As I fought to hold back my fear and hunger induced vomit, I suddenly sensed a pair of eyes coldly staring at me. I looked in the direction from which I'd felt this sensation, and saw before me a little girl in a red dress, just standing and watching. So how do you think this wrong ending is going to play out? Are we going to suffer a similar fate, or are we going to eat? <laughs> Well, never mind. The little girl lifted a frying pan from a nearby gas burner and brandished, it, and brandished it in her right hand. Steam rose from the hot pan and I could see bubbling oil spattering all along its surface. That is going to be so painful. I could see the expression on her face clearly now, mischievous, hungry, and positively jubilant, without even a trace of sympathy or remorse. Ugh. Oh, 
Oh, thank you. Did not need to go through that twice. Whoo! Well, sure I'm glad that's over. Saving. Okay. And now I'm going to go back into Chapter 5 one more time. Clearly going to the second floor was a terrible idea. So, instead I'm going to beat the chapter, you know, like we did before. Except this time, it's going to be uh, extended scenes for the regular ending. Oh, right. The covered walkway. This, I don't know what's going to happen. I wish you would. <laughs> if you recall, he got kicked down a pit and then turns into a puddle from a knife. I ran anywhere and everywhere looking for Kurosaki. <laughs> Remember, he was the plot of this whole episode, screaming his name at the top of my lungs, but he was simply nowhere to be found. Wow, we're just going all over the place. Not in here either. I had no idea when that horrible expressionless man would show up again with this giant hammer. Every little sound was making me cower in fear. What I needed was a weapon, something to defend myself with. There had to be something like that in here, right? Yeah, the art room, that's where I'd go to look for weapons. Whatever. Let's see, what we got. I will take this easel, please. Nothing of interest. That creep could come barging at any moment. I gotta find a weapon. If I see repetition, I'm skipping it. No. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, the game's keeping it relatively easy. No easels, so it's probably gonna be on that shelf. Uh, either shelf. I don't know. Nope. Guess it's you then. <laughs> An oversized chisel in one of the drawers. I don't know, man. If immolation didn't work, I don't have high hopes, but we'll see what happens. Just as a reminder, uh, no one except for the Kisaragi crew actually made it out of Heavenly Host, so I don't have high hopes for Mitsuki even with the chisel. No! This is- this is gonna answer my question! Remember, Chapter 5 ended with Morishige looking at Mitsuki's body, and I was like, excuse me, did I miss something? This is that something. We're gonna see what happened. Oh, she got- she, Mitsuki gets freaking wrecked. This is gonna suck. I just need to hide somewhere. Oh, sorry. I carefully took the chisel into my quaking hands. I wasn't sure if I'd actually be able to fend off an attacker with it, but it was certainly better than nothing. I don't know, nothing was better than that alcohol lamp. Yeah, Kazami. That's who we want to be. Yamamoto. <laughs> <sighs> oh, it's you. 
Yes. Oh my god, this whole game I've been wondering where you'd be, and here you are. <sighs> Please play a prominent role in chapter 6 or 7. Please. <sighs> Tall and handsome, but always just a little on edge. He never changed one bit. This was Yuya Kizami, one of my classmates. <laughs> I think he knows about Fukurai. Yamamoto. Daishobu. Daishobu da. Jijou wa daitai wakatte ru. Datte! Datte! Tare tomo korosere tai da yo! Ano hen ga otoku ni... Technically, Fu... Technically, Fukurai was almost killed by that creepy looking man. Ah, shitte ru. So is Fukurai one of those ghosts we saw in the first game that's like, Kizami? Oh, I like to think so. Hmm? <laughs> Kizami cut my right hand between both of his, as if consoling me, and gently removed the chisel from my grip, and then immediately stabbed me, right? He was so gentlemanly about it, his touch soft and caring. You know, I had a thought. Remember when he stabbed the hell out of Kurosaki in the first game? Maybe that wasn't a knife. Maybe that was this chisel. Oh god, that face. Just wait for it. Mm -hmm. Welcome back, Kazami. We missed you. かわすか。動けるの、山本。何何その。冗談は。あんまり変わらないと思うけどね。俺が本気でも冗談でも山本が死ぬことにはさ。This <laughs> guy. <laughs> what? What was going on? Why was he doing this? I don't know because he's Ragna the Blood Edge. <laughs> さっきの話だけど、一個訂正な。袋井は殴られて死んだんじゃない。うん。刺されて死んだんだよ。こんな感じで。ブスッと。Oh, <笑> Well, I should just cut to Morishige right now. There's a candle shimmering along with a note. Don't look back. Yep. And then she looked back and was like, oh my god, and I didn't know what was going on. Oh! Yeah, so then she ran up some Morishige and he was just like, what's her problem? I, I ran as fast as I could, so this is the new stuff. As far as I could. It was obvious to me now that even Morishige was out of his mind. I love how that's kind of true. There was no one left I could trust. So, so what? Kazami kills, or then Morishige finds the body and is like, "Oh, all right." I really wonder, because remember, Morishige ran to Kazami once, 
and then apparently never again. I really wonder how that would work out later if they were spending more time together. My god, did she get destroyed? Yo, Yamamoto. <laughs> this sucks. Without even a moment's hesitation, my classmate Kisami suddenly swung a giant chisel in my general direction, narrowly missing me. Really? A giant chisel? Like, we just gave it to him. It's not like, now he has a chisel. <laughs> you know it's bad when Morishige is your better option. He just likes to watch. <laughs> My god, this guy's a dick. <laughs> what an asshole. But I can't hate him. Oh, we actually connected this time. What a dick! A sudden burning pain shot through my body, shaking my whole field of vision. The fat, dull blade of the chisel had been forcibly plunged deep into my thigh, all the way up to the handle. Wow. There wasn't much I could do to resist. Not only had he knocked me over, but he was kneeling on the backs of my hands, holding me in place quite effectively. <laughs> he did give that whole speech to Yuka in the first game. Like, people are their most honest when they're dying, so he just wants to see what everyone's like. Pretty creepy. I'm glad they're kind of bringing that back. Yuya Kizami had a twisted grin on his face. He slowly brought his right hand into view, and in it was a proper knife, glinting in the dull light. So I take it back, he did kill Kurosaki with a regular knife. Yamamoto, Hora, Koko, Omae no Hara. My god, this guy. I could feel Yuya Kazami reach up from under my skirt and press the cold blade of the knife against my abdomen. And then, with one thrust, the knife was completely inside my body. My thoughts became jumbled. The pain was so intense it felt like my brain was on fire. It took me a moment to process the sensation of a foreign body lodged unnaturally within me. I could feel all the blood gushing out from the wound. Ugh. Now I'm getting, like, that feeling in my gut, like, ugh. <laughs> I'd never felt anything even remotely like this before in my entire life. I couldn't even describe it if I wanted to. The pain receptors in my body were off the charts. I couldn't comprehend the things I was feeling. But despite my confusion and agony, I knew one thing for certain. If I couldn't stop this from happening right now, I was going to die. Every part of me was in agreement on that. My nerve endings were screaming it, and my brain could focus on little else. I might as well have been on fire. It couldn't hurt any more than what I was experiencing. Oh! <laughs> well, we could talk about that if only you <laughs> interacted with your alternate timeline self. <laughs> 
No, it was too late for me. I could tell that the wounds inflicted were irreversible, irreparable. I had to accept it. I was going to die. I'd begun vomiting blood, and it was beginning to lodge itself in my respiratory tract. Breathing was becoming harder and harder with each passing moment. My abdomen had been completely minced ugh, at this point, and the pain was so intense that I wish I could just leave my body altogether. My arms and legs were cold and numb, and my sense of reality was beginning to waver. My last breath couldn't be far behind. And yet, Yuya Kazami was smiling. It was a distant, relaxed smile, as of someone looking up at the stars or smelling a rose. It was the smile of a psychopath. The smile of a person about to end my life. For no particular reason. Miski's made of tougher stuff than I thought. I couldn't believe those words were coming out of my mouth. Yeah, I could barely speak through all the blood I was spewing, but I was standing my ground. Huh? Yeah, really, it's like, even, even Kazami, like, are you serious? I don't know if you want to do that. I don't know which is worse, happy Kazami or angry Kazami. You don't really see much of angry Kazami. Well, I guess Mitsuki's body is what happens when you get angry, Kazami. For just a moment, Yuya Kazami's psychotic grin turns into a bitter, scornful frown. But then, as quickly as it had vanished, the smile returned. <laughs> really? I'm actually- I, I didn't think that would work out. That is legitimately impressive. I'm gonna remind you real quick that this is the proper ending. <laughs> I was concentrating so hard on biting my lip and holding my mouth closed that I swear I'd forgotten how to breathe. I think I even broke my molars, ooh, from the sheer force of my determination not to yield to Yuya Kazami's twisted desires, I didn't even care. That's gotta be a whole different kind of pain. I'd have no use for my teeth ever again anyway, I wouldn't be eating anything where I was going. I wouldn't scream for him to stop, I wouldn't call for help, and I wouldn't beg for my life. My life was already over. All I had left was the knowledge that I'd go out quietly, without giving this sick freak any measure of satisfaction. He was beyond redemption. There was absolutely nothing I could say or do to help him. I could either waste away silently, or feed his psychosis. I could never make him understand how I felt at that moment, I could never convey to him just what he'd done to me. Death was my best and only option. Yamamoto-san. Yeah, still new. This was definitely the body of Mitsuki Yamamoto. So now we're back to the beginning of chapter 5, we're just looking at the body like, oh. Her stomach and abdomen had been stabbed dozens upon dozens of times and were practically liquefied. They looked a bit like gazpacho. Ugh. Her body was still warm to the touch, too, meaning her death must have only just occurred. <laughs> でも綺麗だ。さっきまでとは運転の差だ。君は今完全に自分の全てをさらけ出して無抵抗だ。いいよね。君を連れて行くよ。<笑><笑> oh. Oh, well, that's really messed up. So he didn't find her on the wall like that and was like, wow, she's perfect. He freaking took her and put her on the wall. That is nuts. 
I withdrew my phone, flipped it open, and switched over to camera mode, where I immediately set about framing her remains at just the right angle. I didn't mind if it was just her image on that tiny screen. To me, it was as good as having the real thing in my pocket. The appeal was identical. It was as if I could freeze time on this moment and preserve her just the way she was. <laughs> wow, that was a squee too, you heard that? <laughs> oh. This, okay, and now we're back. I love this song. I love this scene. But we just saw it. It feels a little kind of like a shame to skip through it, but we just saw it last installment, even though, oh my god. The, oh, this was, this was so fun to watch. Kazami and Morishige both at their best. As twisted as the death scenes was, that, that was a freaking treat. And now... I get to stop the installment. Well, we certainly made a lot of progress today. I didn't think that just tackling two wrong endings and extra scenes on the regular ending would take this a full installment's length, but it did. That said, the wrong installments were really uncomfortable to watch, or, you know, read. Those were some really gruesome deaths. But oh my god, the true ending with Kazami being Kazami, and with Morishige being even more of Morishige than usual. That was something else. Oh my god, this was the Morishige chapter, so I don't expect to see much more of him unless everyone converges later. But I really want to see more of Kazami. He is just delightful. Both of them are, but we just had our share of Morishige, like I said. And by the way... I said last installment that Morishige had the most chilling, bone-wrenching scream of any of the actors here, but really, Mitsuki was, like, really convincing this time as well. That was freaking intense, Jesus Christ. By the way, uh, one thing I should point out to you, um, Kizami, well, the guy who voices Kizami, I mentioned Ragnar the Blood Edge from Blaze Blue, he also voiced two of some of my favorite anime characters, just in general. One of them is Graham Spector from Bakano, who loves to talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk some more, and the other might be one of my favorite anime characters just of all time. He's got the attitude, he's got the badassery, and he's actually, despite what you've seen from Kazami, he's a real freaking hero. Ladies and gentlemen, Joseph Joestar. Until next time, everyone. しゅうすぎる。ハッピーウレピーヨロピクネー。ハッピーウレピーヨロピクネー。サンタナさん、最後一緒に。三、四、ハッピーウレピーヨロピクネー。<笑>